Hello, welcome once more. So in today's video, we'll be chatting about Celpic test and we'll be talking about the third model of the test, which is the writing test. So the writing test is the third model of the test. The writing test has two different tags. The first one has to do with sending an email. The second one is a survey question that you're supposed to respond to. Um, the duration of the exam is between 53 to 55 minutes. Um, one of the exams will be 27 minutes. The other one will be 26. Um, this information is based on when I wrote the test. I don't know if it has changed. So you might have to check while you're practicing if the time frame has changed. Um, there are four rubrics that are similar to the speaking tests, which are used to judge your performance and to grade um, your scores. I will talk about this in the next slide. So the four rubrics are one, content. Um, in terms of content, what the graders are looking out for on the content would be your ideas. So say for instance, you have a survey question where you're talking about the fact that the educational system of schools need to be reviewed and um, updated yearly. So you're supporting that um, that survey in terms of you're supporting the notion that they should go ahead and review the educational syllabus yearly. Now, in the first point where you're talking about this, you might talk about the uh, you can give a general overview of what it is and the reason why you think it should be done. In the second paragraph, you can talk about the fact that in addition to reviewing and updating the syllabus for schools, you can talk about the fact that teachers need to be um, given um, resources and also financial aid for them to go for professional development in order to meet up with this update yearly. So you see, those are two different points which you can bring together because you're going to, uh, for every point, you're going to give us supporting details to tell us this is what my point is, and this is why I'm saying this. So there are two different points. You can mobile up um, the fact that you're saying, oh, educational system needs to be changed. Oh, teachers need to be trained. Oh, the students need to um, be provided with um, resources at the library in addition to updating their, their, um, the syllabus. You see, those are three points which you can add together in one paragraph. So they have to be three separate paragraph and you need to include the supporting details. So think about it as this is, I'll give you an insight. So I'm going to talk about this bottle. So how do I describe this bottle? I will give a general overview of this bottle and then give supporting evidence of why I love this bottle as a drinking bottle, right? And then in the next paragraph, I might be comparing, because it has to do with the survey, I might be comparing this bottle to the general bottle that we usually buy um, from companies that are already pre-packaged. So why would you prefer the pre-packaged bottle from this bottle? I don't know if this is making sense, but this is how I thought about it. Um, in terms of content, you need to think about your ideas. You need to have supporting details for the ideas that you have. For every idea, it has to be under one paragraph. The second idea in another paragraph. And in organizing your um, ideas, you need to use transitions. So you have to use words like firstly. However, nevertheless, there are so many transitions that you can use, but that would also direct um, your, your um, reader to follow your line of thought. So your transitions are helping us to connect the first idea to the second idea to the third idea. So um, that would be all for the content. In terms of vocabulary, um, you need to try to use diverse vocabulary. So um, instead of saying, I am happy in one paragraph, and then saying she is happy in the second paragraph, I would rather use, I am elated, and then use, I am happy in the second paragraph. So this is just an instance to say, try to diversify your vocabulary and try not to repeat the exact word that you're given on the question prompts for every question you're given. Try to show that you have diverse vocabulary. You can interact in different um, environments with different um, audience, or you can even com um, 
um, communicate coherently in English language because that's what they are going to be testing you on. So you can also take some time out to learn about sentence structures. You can learn about simple sentence, compound sentence. You need to learn about sentence structure, learn phrases. I think some of the resources that is available on the Selfie website, they even have where they have descriptions where the provide a word and they will give you like the synonym, like another word you can use in place of that word. Um, in terms of vocabulary, I think the Celpic exam provides the spell check when you're typing in the writing test. I'm not really sure. Um, maybe you have to double check on this, but I think the, um, the spell check is provided. As of when I wrote, I can't remember all the full details. Um, the second, the third thing to think about is your readability. So this has to do with your spelling, your punctuations, your transitions, very, 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 very important. So you might have to take some time out to learn when should you put a comma, when should it be a period, when should it be a semicolon, when should you stop a sentence and start a new one? You need to just learn how to um, how to write better and not just write better, but um, write in such a way that it makes it easier for your grader to be able to read, understand, and make sure that the content of what you're writing has coherence as well. And then the final thing, and this is also one of the most important things, is to make sure that you are fulfilling the tax that you're required. So there's a word count limit for every test. Make sure you're within the word count limit. Don't try to exceed the word count limit. Just try to be within the word count limit exactly if possible. Because if you're not within the word count limit, your some points will be deducted from you. And if you're if you are way above the word count limit, some points would also be really, um, deducted from you. And make sure that every point you're providing has relevance to the question you're being asked. The tone is also important. So if you're writing an email to a friend, you it, it will be more like a friendly tone that you'd be using in that instance. But if you're writing an email to your boss, we would expect the language, the tone, um, the vocabulary to be a bit more formal because you're writing, uh, it has to do with a formal email that you're writing to your boss. All right, we'll move ahead. So my general tips in terms of the writing test is try to outline. So this would be your rough draft. You can use the um, the scrap paper that you've been given at that day um, during the test to just quickly draft out like ideas it doesn't have to be full ideas just you know take notes immediately to draft that idea have that outline because that outline will help you and once you have your outline you can just go ahead to um fill in the gaps and develop your points and also i think that the reason why i prefer the guide is so you don't forget things because it's so easy you're under exam pressure and tension, you can easily forget um, things. Or if you're having like anxiety, it might be so easy to forget some things that you know ordinarily, right? So it might be easier to just have a rough draft, like a sketch where you have ideas of what you want to develop in the work. And then once you have that, just go ahead and start answering your questions because you wouldn't have time. So I would say spend like two minutes to do your rough draft, spend like five minutes developing it, and then spend another five minutes, depending on how much time you have, to fill in the gap of the missing details. You can spend like four minutes, five minutes reviewing, reviewing the information to see if you have all the details that you need. Um, spend some time more to look at your spelling, punctuations, um, give yourself time after writing the test, like give yourself at least four minutes to go through the test over and over again to make sure that you're covering every task and every um, requirement for that question. All right, remember that you have to include a purpose statement and a concluding statement. So when you're writing an email, you need to say, dear, I'll use my name, dear Chidima, you can say, I hope this email finds you well. Or you can just go, hey, Chidima, how are you? Depending on the, depending on the uh, 
on the type of email that you're writing. But say, for instance, I'm writing to myself, I would say, Dear Chidema, I hope this email finds you well. I am currently writing this email to invite you to my book launch. So my purpose statement has to be there at the at the beginning because you want the, the reader and you want um, your grader to know what you're writing about. And also when you're done writing, you need to have a, um, a concluding sentence. You don't just um, finish writing and just stop there. You need to have a concluding statement and you need to have a purpose statement. Remember, support all ideas with details, not just write one idea and leave it that way. Always provide supporting details. Use your own words. Avoid using the exact words on the question. I've said this before because definitely uh, this is an English test and the and the graders are trying to test your vocabulary and see how vast or how well you can communicate in English. For every paragraph, it will be a new idea. Remember, use transitions. You can take time to see what types of transitions that are available. To be honest, when I was preparing for the exam, I knew that using firstly, secondly, finally, I would never go wrong with it. So I had Firstly, to secondly, finally, at the back of my mind, even during the speaking test, because I knew I would never go wrong with them. Um, you can also diversify and use um, different transitions aside from firstly, third, secondly, and you can use however, and nevertheless, but you can also take time to research on transitions. Practice with the transitions that you're more comfortable with. That way, on the exam day, it will be easier for you. Always remember, the audience and the purpose of writing and don't deviate from the purpose of writing to talk about something else. Um, attend both the Target 5 and the 9 plus webinars. The reason why I said it is the Target 5 um, webinars will provide you with information on how to structure an email or how to structure the survey questions. I mean, the Nine plus webinar will cover that, but I, I, in my own understanding and how I saw it when I was writing this, um, I took the target five um, webinar more like, oh, this is the beginner stage of learning about this exams. And when I completed the pro target five, I went ahead to complete the um, the webinar for CLB nine plus, and that was really what helped me towards um, preparing for my test. Remember, always use the performance st um, standard and can do statements to practice. Um, use a computer because you won't be writing with your um, with pen and paper. So use your computer as much as you can to practice. If possible, go to typing.com and keep on practicing. Try as much as you can before your test to practice as much as you can to get used to the words on your keyboard because that would help you to be faster in the exam and be more efficient. All right, so we we'll move over to the um, the task. So the first task is the write, writing an email. Usually this test is for 27 minutes. Um, for this test, you need to know the greetings, like learn different greetings for formal emails, for informal emails, for semi-formal emails, um, the way you would address your boss or the way you would address like a member of a, a particular organization is different from the way you would address your friends, the way you would address someone, you know, like, um, you know, through someone else, like an acquaintance is also different from the way you would address your friend. So be, be mindful and watch out for who you're addressing the email to or who you are writing to. That way it would help you to determine the greeting to use. All right, so in terms of the parts of the email, in writing your email, you don't have to start um, writing to subjects um, from, you don't have to include all those details in terms of recipient subjects. You don't need all of that for this email. All you just need to do is to go straight to the point, like directly straight to the point. Greeting, dear, so, 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 so. Purpose of your statement. I mean, this is purpose of your statement. Like, um, why am I currently writing to you? So I'm writing, just go straight to the point. 
And once you have that purpose statement, the purpose statement should be like your first paragraph. The body of the work should be like the next paragraph that is following up. Depending on how much time that you have, you can write for two points, three points, and depending on the question, um, I think I have the sample question from the Celtic official video. I would also go ahead and share this as well. Um, also, when you're done writing um, the points the, for the first, second, or third, depending, always remember to conclude your statement. And remember your sign-off, yours sincerely, yours faithfully, best regards. Those sign uh, those are like the examples of sign off that you can use in emails, and it's very, very important. Your signature can even be your name at this point, and you just go ahead and complete the essay. And once you're done writing an email, take some time to review. Even though you feel like you've done your best, like you're done and you feel like everything is complete, please do take your time to go through the email to make sure that you have the right information. All right, so this is an example of what the subpick task one looks like. So you see here that they are saying um, you are an elementary school teacher. There is a famous writer who lives near your school. So that's like an idea of what they need you to write. And then here they're saying in about 150 to 200 words. So you see, that's the word count that I talked about earlier. So your essay, your email has to be between 150 to 200 words. Please don't try to um, go beyond 200 words and don't try to write lower than 150 words because you will lose mark for this. And then write to this writer and invite them to speak to the children in your class. Your message must meet the following points. Now, you see this, this part, this, this part here is the test requirement of what the examiner is expecting to see from you. An introduction to the school and your class. So this will be your purpose statement. This should come immediately after the briefing. Second thing here is why the children like this writer's book. So this is the body. This should be more in the body. So you can spend one or two paragraphs to talk about why the children like this writer's book. You can even talk about the fact that the children have read so 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 book or maybe they made reference to read to a social problem in the community. You just have to develop points. Find, like, even when you think, oh, I don't know so much about this, you might not even have the time to start thinking. So once an idea comes, run with it, move as much as you can, uh, uh, as much as you can. Make up stories in order to meet up with the test requirement. That's what I will say about this. And then you see the third one is given the invitation. So when you talk about the reason why, um, talk about the fact that this class has read the author's book, you will go ahead to use another paragraph to talk about inviting the writer to your class. And then you can also talk about the fact that um, what you can also talk about what the writer can do for the children. So these are like the requirements that you need to fulfill for this test. All right, I'll move over to the second task, which is responding to a survey question. So with the survey, it's it's more like an argument, I would say. It's either you agree or you disagree. So you need to learn more about words and phrases that you will use in comparing, in persuading, or in explaining. So you need to learn words that would help you to compare idea A with B, or even words that would help you to persuade your audience or your grader at this point to know that you know how to convey um, your arguments or like how to support a particular position in a survey um, in writing the test. So this test is like 26 minutes. You might not have all the time. Like I said, remember to draft your outline, go ahead and start answering, use your transitions, make sure you're meeting up with all the requirements required for this test. 
practice expressing opinions with ideas to back it up. So for every idea you're developing, you need to have supporting evidence to back it up. The third thing that I have here is to learn the structure of a survey. So you might have to take time out to understand how to write a survey. So first you have to choose a position. I, do you belong to position A or do you belong to position B? So once you say, oh, I belong to position A, then you need to give two or three reasons. And in giving your reasons, try as much as you can to compare and connect the other reason that you're not choosing, which is to say, my reason, which is A, is better than this reason in B, based on this. So aside from the fact that you're providing us with ideas on this, you need to connect the ideas to the other option, which you're not choosing. Why this is a better option than this? All right, so start every new paragraph with every reason. I've said this and I cannot but emphasize it. Don't mump up um, ideas together. Every paragraph needs to have a separate uh, paragraph. Always have supporting details. And then when you're done, use one sentence to summarize your um your responses i do apologize i do have a terrible here this should be um proofread your test so remember to proofread 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 in fact i'm even guilty of the proofreading um <laughs> because i forgot to proofread again before i went ahead to record i was in a hurry but that's not a, an excuse but remember to proofread your test. So I also wanted to say this information here is not from me. It's also from the YouTube channel of Selfie Test. I got this while I was preparing for the test. All right. So this is also from the Selfie Test as well. So this is a sample to give you an idea of what the task two is. So you have to read the following information. When you read this information, you will see that there. Um, you have to take a position in terms of this information that is provided. Can you see here, you have the word count and the word count is between 150 to 200 words. So now you have two options. When you are choosing, in, right, in starting your survey, you will tell us the point that you have chose. If you chose option A, you need to briefly highlight you have chosen option A based on the following before you go ahead. That way, your grader will know which option that you have chosen. And these are your supporting points. So for every idea, have the supporting um, information to back it up. All right. I think this is the end of the writing test. I wish you guys all the best. Remember to get in as much practice as you can. If you are not conversant with typing with your keyboard or typing in general, use um, typing applications such as Mavis Bearcon, um, typing.com. There are so many resources online that are free that you can always use to uh, prepare for the self-pick exams. All right, I'll see you within the week when I upload um, the last segment of the test, which is the speaking test. Thank you so much for watching to the end and I'm wishing you good luck. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the family. All right. Bye.